Hey everyone, we're live, pal. Andrew, three weeks in a row without missing a show. That's uh, pretty good for us in uh, 2024. How are you doing? That's remarkable. <laughs> three in a row, That's man. Remarkable. Uh, listen, the, the stars have lined up. We're both. <laughs> uh, I don't think people realize how busy your day gig is and how busy my day gig is. And generally Tuesdays, we're fine to do it, except for when we're not. But we're here. We're doing it. Yeah. This is good. And hopefully soon people, I think people know the gig now, you know, we had Brian Alvarez come on and do a Q and a, we had uh, vicious Vince, AKA Vinny V come on and do a Q and a, and we're going to try and get big Dave Meltzer in the upcoming weeks. So keep your eye on that one. Uh, so that will mean wh wh whether that means it's going to be a Tuesday or not, that is to be determined. But uh, that is next on our list for Q and A's. Uh, we had a big weekend, man. We had a we had a giant yeah. pay per view that I thought hit a uh, home run, grand slam, a hole in one, whatever your sports metaphor is. I thought I that thought was you were naming. An amazing I show. thought you were naming future AEW pay per view names. I thought that's <laughs> what you just did dynasty i was thinking of what other 1970s and 80s soap opera like shows you could tony khan can start using dallas aw right? dallas aw knots landing there you go aw general one. hospital <laughs> <laughs> by the way before we even talk about the sting thing because man what what a tremendous piece of business yeah. that was what do you know about this dynasty show I know a lot. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase. What can you say about this Dynasty show, if anything? It's in St. Louis, right? Yeah, yes, it is in St. Louis. Um, That was not the original location. Really? Yes. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I was, was wondering, about, I, I was definitely wondering about that because not, you know, St. Louis is great there's a pro wrestling history there's a reason to go to st louis but i was thinking maybe a little bigger for the first time but i, I guess st louis is fine as long as they think they can draw there yeah um uh, i would say um i would have been very excited about the city that they had picked, not because I have any kind of connection to that city, right? It's not New York, mm -hmm. it's not Jersey, it's not, you know, anywhere here. But I thought it was a pretty, I thought it was um, clever, the city. Interesting. That it was clever what they were doing. But uh, I, I, listen, another pay per view, right? Day after 420, 421. Um, I cannot say a word. I have been sworn. <laughs> So based I would off order of, it. I mean, listen, I would suggest ordering the pay-per-view. Yeah, it'll it'll be up to snuff for AEW fans. Yeah, absolutely. I think um adding another pay-per-view is probably smart because at least from a business perspective, their pay-per-view business, you know, wh whether or not you feel ratings are flat or down or or whatever, and, and we've gone ad nauseum on this website about what that stuff actually means. You know, they win the night, they win the night. That's kind of what they're looking yeah. for. The pay-per-view business is still something that I think they, they, they can continue to maximize, and, and we have to find what the perfect number is. But another pay-per-view in six weeks, I think, is probably good business, especially if this pay-per-view that they just did revolution is gonna be one of the top earners in the lifespan of aew which it seems like it may be i guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see what the deal is with the, the people who couldn't order it on br for whatever reason on uh, on that that day of but it just felt like a pretty big deal and you and i were in chicago in 2021 for all out which i consider the greatest live wrestling event i i've been to yeah and this pay-per-view i would have to re-watch the all out show on uh, on pay-per-view again to kind of compare it but I, this is probably my favorite pay-per-view that i've actually ordered and watched 
uh, of all of the AEW shows. I've been to a lot of the other ones that I'm sure other people would pick. But man, this this hit all the right things for me in in what I enjoy about pro wrestling. Oh, dude, it was um I I I I saw so many people say this was the best pay-per-view they had ever seen. This is the best AEW pay-per-view. I felt that it was probably one of the best that they've done. I don't I don't know. I I mean, listen, it, it could I still think All In was the best because it was such a monumental moment for them. Uh, in the you're talking about Wembley company. No, I'm sorry, All Out. I'm talking about All Out. Yes, sorry. the one that we went uh, to. All Out 20. Yeah, the one that we went to. I I still stand by, but that was I was there, so I got a very different feel of it. And a lot has changed in wrestling in the last three years. So mm-hmm. I don't know if I would feel the same way. Re- you know, if it was today. However, this show, top to bottom, great. Uh, top to bottom, I I had no issues with it. Uh. What would you say was the worst match? And again, I'm not criticizing the talent, but what would you say? It was maybe the that scramble, right? On the I didn't court? watch. I didn't watch the pre-show, and I'm I'm kind of glad because that was just about the perfect four-hour show. If I would have watched the pre-show, maybe I would have felt a little bit different. But I would go with the scramble over the women's match as as the worst match. I I thought the scramble for like. All of but maybe the last few minutes of it was like a giant mess, yeah, like just whatever. missed stuff. Yeah. And, you know, you have guys that don't really make sense of being in the ring with each other, which is why the meat madness idea would have been cool, because you kind of know what you're going to get. I think Dante Martin and, and Jericho were probably in that match to kind of stitch it together and keep it together. But I don't even think they did that great of a job of doing yeah. that. But I also know people who like that match. I, I was not one was, of them. And- and Jericho had a uh, a difficult time with Landis Jr. Also, you know, the week the week before. So... That was a rough. That was a rough match. That also a lot of people seem to like. And I watch it, and I didn't get it. I didn't understand. I, didn't understand I thought what it was way rougher than it should have been. I it, it was yeah. it was unnecessarily rough. And I'm not. I I think maybe the style difference and the language difference maybe played a part in this. I don't know because there was no reason. Both of them are fantastic wrestlers. There was no reason for it to go that way. Um, I would say, though, if I'm going to say, I would say this is probably could be their best pay-per-view they've ever done. I, yeah. I, I'll probably take that. Listen, the other thing is, you know, it's five hours. The show ended late. Yes. I, I, you know what? My, when, when I'm in that scrum, you know what I'm going to ask, Tony? Why do, <laughs> why do pay-per-views have to go to midnight? I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. Why do they have to go five hours or whatever it is? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, yeah, it it ended at twelve, so four hours. Why do we have to go to midnight though? So you either want him to start earlier or cut out a seven match. to eleven, seven to eleven fifteen. That's where I want to go. Remember the pandemic when WWE was ending pay per views at like ten forty? Yeah, two hours and thirty minute shows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were just like sometimes it was like ten fifteen. You're like we're wrapping up. It was great. I will say we're spoiled on the West Coast because this show started at five, was done at nine. I wasn't tired. If I was on the East Coast, I would have been really tired, especially on a yeah. Sunday. So I give you guys a lot of credit. You, you diehards on the East Coast, knowing you got to go to work the next day and being able to stay up. And and some people are even doing content after that is is done. So when I, you know, I do it, I'm like, ah, it's fine. I'm, I'm here. Uh, it's it's not that late. So. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, uh, but but yeah, Andrew you know what? I love watching course. wrestling on the. I almost did. I almost moved to Calabasas about ten years ago. Almost so you know, da- you know, Dave and Brian's gig is trying to get everyone to move to Hawaii because you, it's like even it's like, well, it's three hours earlier than the West Coast in Hawaii, so you're done with everything, like, and you still can go out to eat dinner. Oh man. I, I I would be convinced of doing that, to be honest. I'll never never to wear shoes again. Like Kevin? I would I'm into I would it. do it. I'm I barefoot it. all the if time I, already. If I could get uh my kids to come out there, I would I would definitely do it. Yeah. Because it's the same just like sports, right? Is you have uh you know, your basketball game starts at seven thirty on the wet or seven on the west coast. It starts at like four in Hawaii and you're done before, you know, for the night's over. I, I would be really yeah. into that. Uh, so 
Look, can we talk about Sting here? Because let's do it. I would say by Friday, I was pretty excited for this Sting thing. Now there was a conversation happening all throughout social media and in discords and such about what should happen during this match. Should the Young Bucks win or should Sting and Darby win? And I was a megaphone saying Sting needs to win this match. He sold out the house. The people bought tickets to see him. And, you know, there were some detractors to that statement. I, I did a poll on uh, on Twitter. And thank you to Sean Ross Sapp for re- retweeting it and amplifying it because we got, I don't know, 20 some odd hundred uh responses and there was still wow. about 38 percent of people who thought the young bucks should win the match i was like huh, now, is that, that is because so they're following is is that because of the the tradition that you put over on your way out is is that why or do they really want to see the young bucks win the titles they think that this is how you're supposed to do it that this is the rule of wrestling is when you leave you're supposed to lose and put over the guys who are there and staying. Now I get it, okay. but if it weren't for Montreal, the Montreal screw job, how many people would still think that way? I don't know. You know, the I time honored tradition, the that time Vince honored tradition. About. Listen, I, I think you, you can make up your own rules. It doesn't matter really. Uh, if, you know, at the end of the day, what is your you're catering to your audience, not to some make believe uh, story? Yeah, you know, they're they're the unwritten rule of professional wrestling, and I, to some extent, I think that's right. Right, like if you are, um, let me think about this. Let's go back to WrestleMania 39, Steve Austin and Kevin Owens. I'm sure there were a, a small amount of people who thought Kevin Owens, wow, if Kevin Owens can beat Steve Austin here, he's yeah. an immediate top guy or however Is you want to say But that. would he be? I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's already up there, right? He's already great. But in Dallas, the people want to see Stone Cold win that match. Me sitting at home on television, I was – desperate for austin to win that match because you know he's the, he's the guy he's the old hero who is who has come back and you don't want to see the old hero you know go out on a sword that's sad that's not fun no matter if it helps the other guy you still have to tell a story and the story on wrestlemania 39 weekend was austin's gonna win and everybody yeah. was ecstatic and it actually helped it kind of gave wwe a little bit of a kick in the pants because some people came back to WWE for that match. Now let's fast forward to now. It's it's kind of the same thing. Like Sting sells out the house. The whole and I, this is where you know I'm, I can be hard on on Tony Khan's booking uh, a lot because it just it's just not necessarily always my style. But what a tremendous job Tony Khan and AEW did with this, especially in the last week. Last you know, I'd say you know last two weeks. The flair thing was kind of weird when he went to the Young Bucks locker room and that whole thing was kind of thrown on at us at the end. But the presentation, the the countdown, I know not a lot of people watch the countdown, but I specifically watched the countdown because I wanted to see the Sting stuff. Yeah. The way that they sold the whole show around him, the stuff with his kids. Oh, it was it was like top notch. It was it it was everything about wrestling that I love, like just encapsulated into one match and one uh, segment to end a pay-per-view. So shout out to everybody involved because I thought it was near perfect. And so going back to what I was saying is, you know, I still find it hard to believe that people really wanted him to lose that match or at least thought he should have lost that match because had he lost that match, we don't get that great moment, which I'm going to remember for a very long time. Yeah, I, I what a great send off, right? He got to do it the way he did. You know, one thing about AEW, and, and if, if there was anything WWE can learn from them, which WWE does great in so many things, and quite possibly now with with the you know the way that that company has changed, it'll be different. 
but they respect the veterans. They don't look like fools at the end of the day. At the end of the day, in WWE, you don't even have to be gone for too long. You could still be a guy that's in shape and that could go. But the moment they did, they determine that you're old, you're done. And they embarrass you, and you're doing the tutti frutti in the back, and you're dancing, and you're in a poker skit, and you're you know you're looking like an idiot. Uh, they do this regularly, and and you know what? They didn't do that in AEW with Sting. They didn't do that with Rob Van Dam. They did. They haven't done that with Christian. They haven't done that with Edge. They don't make their legends look like fools, because at the end of the day, guess what? You're buying. You're buying the name, not the actual com- competition. That's hmm. what you're investing in is the name. You're not investing in the best talent, you know, to have to have, you know, the best fights. Uh, you gotta, you gotta use it in that capacity. You know, to be honest, they haven't done that to Hogan, but Hogan did it to himself in the end. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. he, he, he mm-hmm. WWE protected him till the end. Um, I, I just, I, I thought the way that AEW handled Sting was as close to perfect. You know, could he have had a couple more singles matches? I would have loved to see it. Could he have? challenge for a world title i would have loved to see it but they really want to keep him undefeated they did they realized his limitations so did sting and he did tag matches his entire run there practically he did have a singles didn't he did he have at least uh, one singles? good question i don't remember i would assume so but maybe not you know the other thing about this though the way that they did this they have a roster of younger folks and older folks. And the older folks are kind of, you know, some of those older folks are near the end. Like you think of like an edge and a Christian. What they yeah. did with this sting thing is they built an event based off of giving the fans what they wanted to see. And it worked. And, and, I'm assuming Edge is going to turn heel and he and Christian are going to do a tag thing. And then at some point, Edge is going to turn back on Christian and sure. you know, be a baby face again. And when that happens, then you could do the same thing for Edge. You build an event. And guess what? You got two years out of it, right? You can right. have them do their, their, their tag run done the right way. They beat the Bucks. They win the title. Somebody else comes, takes... They could do it all over again. And maybe that should be the answer. You know, in hindsight, now looking at this edge run or, or Adam Copeland, it's, it's so, I hate that name. Adam Copeland? <laughs> I, I, hate, I hate it. You, yeah, because yeah. we're because we, we knew, knew him for, you know, almost 30 years as edge. But you're right. And there are others who are, in this company who if you want to do something dustin rhodes being one of them right now dustin isn't the same size of a star but he was in the second main event on their very first show against his brother and you could do something very easily with him where he's about to retire and he wants one last shot whoever the champion is is like buddy we got some rankings here you better get in line and he wins a couple matches to get a tv you know, a, a, a TV yeah. championship opportunity to win a to win a title in his last Listen, match. By the you way, could do something I, like I, that. I, I know his real name is Adam Copeland. Okay, yes, I know that. Yes, people are like his name is Adam Copeland. I know that. I, I just I can't get past not calling him Edge. It's a mental no, block. It's impossible. I don't know how the announcers do it. I commend them for it. People are still calling Listen, Brian Danielson yeah. Daniel Bryan. And yeah, yeah. So it's hard. I they put these names it, in our minds. <laughs> I know the the the, the Vinceisms are stuck. <laughs> so yeah, I I just think that they've created a blueprint on what on something that works a for the fan base and for how this fan base enjoys wrestling and b for the gates because when you yeah. know the, they are struggling selling their TVs, but. They did bonkers for this show on on uh, on the house, and then it looks like they're going to do really well on pay per view. So, home run again, using the sports metaphor, home run event for AEW. And now, what's the fallout here? What 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 do we got coming? Uh, we have big business coming in uh, in a week and a half, so they'll have some stuff. They have uh, Will Osprey, who I think people are looking at as like, oh. 
he's got to be the top guy like now the top baby face like just look at this guy and it's a great problem to have they have to figure out swerve and hangman and samoa joe and where they're going there and it looks like hangman's going to be out for a little while per i believe it was uh sean ross Sapp reported that and so now you know we have some open-ended questions that with strong booking can make dynasty a, a very interesting event because now you're kicking off dynasty double or nothing forbidden door all it's every in. month like we're kicking it into high gear pretty soon here right so this is be every uh, six weeks or so this was a great opening pay-per-view for them and hopefully kicks off some really strong programs so that we can be invested in, in what is to come uh, and I hope that we we start on uh, on Wednesday, though not a ton announced yet so far. Uh, changing gears really quickly. What did you think of Osprey and Takeshita? Uh, I uh, remarkable. Uh, that was that was my favorite match, and, and there were so many to pick from. Uh, that match was so good. Uh, just two of the best, really. Uh, I obviously we know that about. Osprey, but I think this was a great showing for Takeshita. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so I didn't like necessarily the pairing of the two guys because I knew Takeshita was going to have to lose this match. They weren't going to have Will lose in his debut. But the match was so high quality that didn't even matter at the end. Takeshita yeah. was seen in a new light, even though I think a lot of people really like him. I think he was seen in, in a different light after this match. And so in the end, I was wrong. It was actually really good booking and it, it worked. Osprey, you know, he, here's an interesting one for me. So we saw Osprey come in and just sort, you know, not, not, he was not going to be the talk of the town because we still had the sting thing, but maybe secondarily so. People are mentioning Osprey right after the Sting retirement. This is really Tony Khan's test, I think, which is you have the best wrestler or arguably the best wrestler in all of wrestling right now. You know, at his age, most definitely. Can you turn him into a bigger star? Can you enhance his stature? in wrestling to turn him from the best wrestler into the biggest star that has got to be like the biggest challenge but also something that tony is just like yes this is this is something that i've been you know that i'm looking forward to doing because man osprey may not cut the promos that everybody else does he's a little bit different there uh, he came out in the Kermit the Frog sweatsuit, which I wasn't that big of a fan of presentation. Well, did you hear his reason? Did you hear his reason? He said well, that his I know luggage his, got lost. Yeah, his luggage got lost. And so I'm assuming, even though they found it, maybe they didn't find it in time. But man, you know, they were, where, where were they for that show? Is, there's a, there's a mall around maybe? Quickly there's no, my there's no tracksuit mall. <laughs> quickly get my guy to a local macy do they still have macy's i don't know maybe talking maybe about talking about a sweatsuit i have i have the greatest sergio ticini black sweats sweatsuit it is unbelievable i would have shared it with him he could have borrowed yeah. it yeah a nice he, he, ticini, I mean, that's what he needs to start wearing wearing forget about the forget about the adidas i'm going to teach him a little <laughs> bit about sweatsuits here <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The presentation, like that, that is going to be a part of it now. Some AEW fans are going to say, "Oh, so here's my question to WWE: you. We need to be different." But I just think the you guy gotta, is the goods. He's the goods. You have a guy like Will Ospreay, right? And and he's not the first. I mean, he is he is the greatest right now. But they've had this opportunity numerous times. Who have they had that you would consider a great wrestler that they have elevated into a higher level? One, I would think Eddie Kingston, right? Eddie yes. would be one. Eddie Eddie was a great, very different style, but great wrestler, virtually unknown, and they've elevated him into somebody on TV, which is exactly what you want to do with your talent. Mm -hmm. But then you have someone like Jay White that came in as a former IWGP world champion, 
And he really hasn't done much after that. Right. I know that the plans changed. The punk program got messed up. There was two titles. and I get it. But who else have they grabbed that wasn't, you know, that is at that level and that they've elevated? I think this is a great test for them. I, I think yeah. Swerve is one. You know, yeah. is he is he a Will Osprey level? I don't know. How do you judge that, right? It's very different styles. But Swerve came in there, um, an indie guy for sure. I mean, one of the best on the indies, and went to someone WWE. who WWE let let go. They let him go, and they let him go. I, I one day that I don't know if they've told the story about how he was let go, but it wasn't like on good terms. You know, it wasn't done right. It was a very convoluted reasoning, but he leaves, and over time, he just develops into this character, and now he's, you know, one of the top guys in that company. I hope they do that with Will. I hope they give him more depth in his character mm -hmm. and who he is. They start telling us more about him, because if I'm turning on AEW, why is he great, right? Like, I I'm, I'm just thinking as a casual, I know why he's great. But if I'm watching him and you're telling me he's one of the best free agents out there, tell me why. Show me. I mean, they did on the pay-per-view, but give me those packages. Build them up every week as this top-tier, only once-in-a-generation talent. Yes. Don't just don't just have them go out there and cut a promo and then leave and say, you know, I'm 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 the best. They had an opportunity with Kenny Omega, right? Kenny Omega was the most unique pro wrestling star that I had seen maybe ever for his New Japan run. He was unique. He was charismatic. Yep. He, he wasn't the same way that WWE stars are charismatic. And I thought there was, an, there was a chance that he could have been like bigger than life just because of all of the great things that he does. And I'm not saying that his run was a disappointment in any way. He wanted to be a heel, and they did the Don Callis stuff, and it was a little goofy. Uh, ultimately, he's a success story. He is uh, he's, he's great. But I always wonder if his run should have been more important or bigger than it was. Now there's pandemic stuff. You know, there's, there's lots yeah. of reasons for it. So to Numerous, me, this, yeah. is, this, this is your second chance here with the guy who was sort of there to kind of replace Kenny Omega in New Japan. Uh, he did not make New Japan a as big. Now, again, pandemic-related, lots of different reasons. But, again, a unique guy. A guy who uses bruv constantly. Uh, so, you you know, how do you, how do you work with that? How do you accentuate the things that, like you said, that makes up Will Ospreay and take it to another level for him. That's what I'm going to be so interested in. I think I think he is ready to take it up another level. The wrestling is obviously there. And it's time to see, you know, the bigger than life Will Will Ospreay that I think we all sort of feel is, is coming or or is inside of him. You know, the Kenny thing you touched on, uh, I think about regularly as far as, you know, did what I, I think about what would have Kenny Omega in, you know, committed full time in the States look like if he was in WWE and yeah. it, there was no AEW in 2019 and he went to WWE. Um, I always saw it as a trajectory of AJ Styles, you know, that initial, uh, you know, they, they elevated Styles for sure when he went there and he wasn't a guy that was, you know, planned for. I think it was more planning for Kenny if he were to go there. I, I'm curious how it would have looked. And where we would be if that was the case. Would the injuries have played a part? Maybe. Would he have been just subjugated to wrestling Dolph Ziggler and The Miz every week? Maybe. <laughs> or would he have become, you know, would he have been the wrestler's wrestler and he would have had all these tremendous matches and four years later he would have, you know, had his run? I don't know the answer, but I think for, for Kenny and AEW, there were so many variables. One, a lot of those guys didn't want to hold the titles, including the Bucks, including uh, Cody. Right. They, they didn't want to make it about themselves. And I think that was a detriment to that company. When you have, you know, top tier talent like this and they're just not sold on a world title run. Kenny finally got it. Like you said, he was a heel. So it didn't resonate as much. 
So uh, there were numerous, and then the pandemic, obviously. So yeah, I, I, very interesting. I I think you know, is this a do over for him? I don't know. Uh, quite possibly. Here's a question for you, because I don't think Kenny Omega would have been treated like an upper tier guy in WWE unless the AEW competition was there. Because what if you replaced Cody today in WWE with Kenny Omega? It's a different act completely. Like they Very. are two completely different human beings for one. You don't have the you know the the wrestling family stuff uh, as much w w with Kenny. Uh and and it would be a different character, but W if WWE was as sold on Kenny as they were on Cody, I do wonder if they could have then pushed him to the the heights that that Cody is at now. But again, like I I, I say that by also saying I don't think WWE does that without the existence of AEW and the existence of AEW kind of giving them a little run for their money by beating NXT by improving their ratings. This is even pre Punk, but you know, they're kind of coming and WWE's like, okay, well we can get this guy. That's one of their lead dogs. And, and we know it will hurt them. If that was code, if that was Kenny instead, and they, they have to push him and, and such, it would be a different character altogether and, and, yeah. and, and unique, but I'd be interested to see what that character looked like. Yeah, me too. I, I would, I'd like to see what the bucks would look like there too. <laughs> and hangman, you know, what would that have been like? It would have been crazy is what it would have looked like. They would have turned him into uh, the new version of Magnum TA because they, they would see his ability to grow that mustache. Yeah. Okay, let, let's talk about some of the other matches real quick before uh, talking WWE here. The, the, the triple threat for the world title. I hated the story going in. I still am kind of flustered by this idea that Hangman you know, ultimately wants to win the world title, but if he can't win it, then he makes sure that Samoa Joe is the one who who keeps it because he's screwing Swerve or he's swerving Swerve. I wouldn't have done it that way, though. I didn't. I wanted to see Swerve be the street smart guy who is not going to be fooled by normal heel tropes. And he was, and I was really disappointed because I think when you do that to even a very cool baby face, it just hurts them for almost no reason whatsoever. Like they could you have know, told I... the same story without Hangman doing what he did. And I just thought it hurt Swerve. But yeah. at the same time, I do think Swerve needs to win this world title, even if it is to eventually lose it to Osprey because... If you if you continue down this road where he's, you know, second place, do you have faith in AEW that they will be able to heat him up to this level again this time next year? I'm not sure. I don't think so, actually. I, I don't know. I I I I'm not sure either. I, I think for Swerve, like if you're gonna if I'm gonna defend his uh him getting fooled by Hangman, I would say He's trying to become a better person because he's now like a baby face. You know, he's kind of a baby face. So he gave him the benefit of the doubt to that he is hurt. Maybe that's what it was. And he fell for Samo it. You know, who did, you know who didn't fall for it, though, was Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe's like, ah, I think he's lying. He's like, ah, I think I'm still going to be facing two people at the pay-per-view. So if you're going to do what you did with Swerve, like you said, giving him the benefit of the doubt, then doesn't Joe also have to be slightly fooled? Because he absolutely wasn't, which I thought made Swerve look even more ridiculous as the babyface. Yeah. I would redo <sighs> that one. You know, you got a lot of strong characters also in here where they're yeah. all heels, essentially, right? Swerve is mm -hmm. kind of the babyest of the babyfaces, but he's still, uh, last week he was wrestling a heel style and Hangman was wrestling like a babyface. So, uh, it's it's a weird combination. I, I think Swerve is going to get that moment. Obviously, uh, they're building to this. You don't get a chance to create a star too often, and yep. they have a great opportunity to create a star. So they have to do it at the perfect timing. It has to matter whether that's the pay per view, you know, coming up in April or double or nothing or whatever. You know, uh, you do it at all in or all out. It it has to happen this year. I feel like it is. 
Um, but you also have to see what's that top looking like. You know, who's his opponent? Is is it going to be Jay White? Is it going to be Will Ospreay? You know, you also have uh, MJF coming back, right? That's another thing. Mm-hmm. This roster is going to be very different when everybody's healthy in a couple months. Very I think different. Swerve. I think Swerve should win the title. I okay. would do it sooner than later because you want. When him would you to do it? Ast- ast- I would do it at the next pay per view. Okay, but if you want to push it to double or nothing, uh, like let's say you get Swerve and Hangman again at the, at Dynasty, and and the winner gets the next title shot, and you have Swerve beat Hangman there in in a classic, I'd be okay with that. But Swerve cannot lose in his next championship match. He's got to win. So whether that's at Dynasty, whether that's at Double or Nothing, uh, because I do think belting Will at All In is going to be fantastic. And I would look into having uh, you know, a, a great, the, the best match possible, right? That's not going to be with Wardlow. At this point, I think, I think he'd have a tremendous match with Samoa Joe. But he may have a better match with Swerve. He'd probably have a better match with Hang, hang uh, Hangman. So I would look. I would look at who you have who could probably give you know the the craziest best match w- with Will, and that that's probably Swerve, at least to me. That but then you may have two baby faces going up. So I don't know. There's there's not much of a grudge there. So maybe I, I don't know. I, I I well, what I would do is I would put it on Swerve sooner than later get him to all in, have Will win at all in. And then Swerve, even though it's a shorter title run, Swerve's made, right? He becomes a guy who all of a sudden, you don't need the belt to be a top guy now. He's just a top guy because he's a former champion. But they don't do, they don't do uh, short title runs in that company. They have not. And I think they're going to either have to start in some instances, or they need to, make one of those other titles like bigger than than it than they are now because yeah you know christian's doing a great job but i don't think we we see christian as like the top contender to the world title same they with also haven't the told Hor- us they haven't told us which belt matters more yeah they, they really haven't done that where in wwe they make it very clear right depending on the time like is the U.S. title when it when it is the prominent one? It is when the IC title is the prominent one. It is. It, it, they also have two world titles that they don't have to really worry about because they they could do this. Well, you get a belt and you get a belt. AW doesn't have that with the secondary world title. They did for a mm-hmm. short period of time, and I'm sure that that was in the mix here. Uh, man, wasn't that end story always going to be a ladder match for the title between MJF and and Punk? Wouldn't wouldn't that have been? <laughs> And neither one of them wanted to do business at that time. Yeah. I, sh- I shouldn't say that. I didn't mean it like that. It just, it wasn't in the cards. That's what I mean. Not that they, they, they said, I, absolutely not. I'm not going to work with this guy. It just wasn't in the cards at the time. And they didn't take the opportunity. I don't think people saw it going the way it did. And we're left here. I, I, and I'm not saying they need a secondary title, but they need to emphasize something. You know, it is technically that crown, uh, the 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 continental championship, right? What continental crown, continental triple crown? What what are they calling it now? The continental crown, whatever, <laughs> whatever. That should be one of them. That should be the second most important belt in that company. Okay, but then that means the ROH World Title is higher than your other belts, uh, as well as the New Japan Strong Title. I guess if you have all three of them. Uh, you know, it's like, a, it's like individually, they're just like, meh, but you put them together and then they're like super powered. I, I, yeah, I, I could see that now. The problem is, is that I don't know, you know, what, what, what is, what is Tony Khan's partnership with new Japan? Like with that belt. And so in some instances, yeah. I don't know. Like, let, let's say you have to lose that title to someone from New Japan because of whatever reason. Maybe you don't want the top guy to have it because then you're sort of at the mercy of being a partner. I don't know. Ex- I don't know exactly how they're booking all that stuff. So uh, I, I'm just sort of, I might be speaking out of, out of turn here. But 
Christian, now Roddy Strong has the other belt. Uh, I don't see those guys as top contenders for the world title. And that's probably a problem. Um, especially if you have, you know, seven or eight contenders for the top belt, right? Like there's so many guys. Once Okada comes in and MJF comes back and Adam Cole comes back from injury, like you're adding three more guys to the mix of main event stuff. And but let's add Kenny too. Let's add Kenny also. And add Kenny when he comes back. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of guys in the top mix, and I hope that they could actually do that w- with the women's side too. We're bringing in Mercedes, um, whatever they're going to do here with uh, with Tony Storm's character. I-, I would love to see that type of competition for top spots with the women's title because yeah. then, you know, you're seeing more of these matches on television like we only had two on the pay-per-view and i'm not sure what else you could have added unless you know one and one of them was on the zero hour so i want to see more of a mix in in that on that women's side too hopefully they can build up some of the some of the folks there get continue get getting statlander back up and uh and you know i guess serena deeb maybe mercedes's first opponent Hopefully Britt comes back, but the one is uh, Jamie Hader. Hopefully she is is going to be able to come back because I think she's she's got the opportunity to be like the top top star for the for the women in AEW. Uh, okay, let's actually let's talk a little bit about WWE in these last fifteen minutes here. Rock and Roman did a forty minute segment on SmackDown, which I'm sure you've already talked about on some of your other shows. That segment, I thought it was really long and eh, it was a little boring. It was kind of fun. But the promo that Rock did on Twitter <laughs> was awesome oh my God. in yeah. comparison to that. So much so that uh, Seth and, and Cody were kind of answering stuff off of the Twitter promo in their retort on Monday Night Raw. Like I saw them referencing some stuff that Rock said on Twitter and not on, on the, the main uh smackdown promo but where are you now with this story because i think when when they did the press conference uh the uh a couple of weeks a few weeks ago we were kind of like huh this seems like it's like hot shotted and things are kind of moving in weird directions the rock explained it very well in the twitter promo he kind of created the story and and now they, they have this they have this match for wrestlemania night one the tag match is either going to be a, a, a winner. Uh, if Rock and Roman win, then Roman's main event on night two is a blood rules or anything goes. Or I, for, I forgot what he called it. Bloodline something match. Or if Cody and Seth win, the bloodline is not able to be at ringside. I think that's a, that's a really fun stipulation. Are you Have things started to make more sense for you as this storyline has gone on uh it, it's it's gotten it, it was convoluted then it was making a whole lot of sense and then now it's back to being convoluted with the stipulations if you beat me then i won't go down to the ring but if i beat it's very pro wrestling but yes. why did cody give up his spot that's what i don't understand i mean in reality he gave up his spot because he wasn't in the mix anymore and they did a 180, but what was the thinking behind that? It, it really took me out of it. So this guy talking about a story, talking about a story, and all of a sudden Dwayne shows up. He goes, listen, it's not my time. It's his time. When I asked, I was told it'll all make sense. <laughs> well, okay, so, so this is where Rock's promo on Twitter comes into play because the way that he explained it is that on January 1st, he had the plan of they wanted to see if the fans wanted to see Rock and Roman as the biggest WrestleMania match of all time. And when he saw that in front of the crowd and he said, do you want to see me at the head of the table? And the crowd went crazy. That was the sign of like, okay, this is going to be the match. And then he said, and then Cody went out and won the Royal Rumble. And he's like, I was so proud of him, like back to back. What a great job. He, He was fantastic that night. But he said that they had a discussion and the agreement 
was that Cody would go for the other belt and that Rock would have the Roman match because they both understand the business. They're both raised in the business. They both grew up in the business. So they understand how big this Rock versus Roman Reigns match is supposed to be. So Cody agrees to step aside. And when they did the thing on SmackDown, when Cody came out and the Rock whispered in his ear, the Rock said, he told him, you know, think about the Soul Man, think about Dusty, and, you know, the, just about, you know, this is the right thing for business. And yeah. so when they went to the press conference, and then they kind of, you know, they kind of did the thing where Roman was going to announce who he wanted, and he announced Rock, and then they they both kind of, made fun of maybe Cody a little bit, which got him upset. Then he made the line about the the bloodline and, and the families and such. And then Cody changed his mind. And that that's the thing that he said last night too. He's like, I changed my mind. So he in storyline is accepting that there was a previous deal, but because he did not like the optics of what was going on, he changed his mind and he took what was rightfully his. So that is the storyline that they are telling. Now we know behind the scenes, it, it was much different about how they yeah. were doing this. So as a storyline, it's not bulletproof. It has holes. But I think these, I think all four of these guys actually are good enough storytellers to where, eh, we'll, we'll sort of forgive some of the holes. The pr- You know what the problem is going to be though? Hmm. The night one match. What if the night one match sucks? I think that's the problem in this whole thing. Or what if it's like unbelievable? If it's right? unbelievable, then night two is going to be made. I I mean I don't know. I I I'm very curious about this because it I I always feel like that that initial reaction the pop matters, right? So if Cody loses, right? Let's say Cody and Seth lose, and I imagine they will because it'll be a schmaz in that main event. Uh. Does it heighten night two or does it hurt night two? And this opposite, you know, if Cody wins and they're barred from ringside, uh, does it help or does it hurt? I don't know. I can't. It really is going to depend on the energy of that stadium, mm-hmm. depending on what time the show goes on. You know, that's going to play a big part. It's, it's how does that audience feel? Because I got to tell you, remember that Ronda match? Uh, the main event mm-hmm. wasn't terrible. No, uh, was it New York? Ron, the 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 three way, right? Yeah, it was in New York. It was in, my God, it was in New York. I totally that feels like it was an eternity ago. <laughs> it that was. audience was so tired, was so tired, where it nothing mattered after that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want that to happen, especially with a main event, especially if you've seen it twice. So I I don't know. I I, I think a lot of this is going to have to do with the happenstance around the match. I'm very much against it. I don't like the two night thing. Uh, I don't like the two night thing to begin with. I understand why they do it, and I don't want like seeing it be you know two different matches mm-hmm. from night one to night two. You know, I I would have even gotten behind. You know, you got to beat somebody to get me at night two. You know, like mm-hmm. I I would have even bought that, and you could have had a big time main event also on that night two. Well, well the he- the heel way to part. do it, the heel if you don't have Rock, the heel way to do it is Roman dangles the the other belt over Cody and Seth's head and goes, you guys got to fight to 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 get a shot at me. That would have been the heel yeah. way to do it for without the rock. Okay, so here's the thing, though, that, that I'm also intrigued in. The rock has turned heel, even though when he comes out and on SmackDown, the fans, the live crowd, you know, is playing along. But they do treat him like a different level than they treat everybody else. There's like a an awe that the crowd has when he comes in. And of course he's a giant movie star at the same time, but he talked about, he likes to tell these longer stories. So if we are to believe what is happening here, they're going to do this year's mania. And maybe next year's mania is for the baby face turn and for the true head of the table. That's a, that allows the bloodline to stick around and and be hot mm. for another year, which is prob which was probably the worry last year and why Cody lost last year is because you wanted the bloodline to stay hot, and the bloodline has has stayed hot. It's carried business really, and so now 
you're keeping it around for yet another year in hopes that Rock's star power and Roman's character change uh, because he got the Rock to acknowledge him as the 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 tribal chief and so his his character is just kind of in a, in a different level of you know being into himself and sort of being power hungry yeah. and so I, I i'm just wondering can that last a full calendar year for us to get to wrestlemania 41 and they finally have that match and then the rocks sort of two year uh, two year revolution there is done and, and, and we, we finally see the end of, of all of that. That is that is a lofty goal. And imagine if they goal. can keep the business how it is right now. What a tr- and, and look, it, it, it's all. And I say this because in, in in Dwayne's promo. Who does he mention? He mentions Bella Bajari, who runs the the programming at Netflix, right? Yeah. In January, they're going to be on Netflix heading into WrestleMania 41. Yeah. So that is bad. He's going to be on. Yeah. He's going to be all over that show. He's got to, right? Yeah. So he he has to be. And he mentioned another thing that I thought was interesting. He said he's in the biggest movie on Netflix. I wonder if that's true. And, and what is, what is the biggest big movie on mean? Netflix? I'm guessing he's thinking he's saying the Red Notice movie, right? Was that the biggest movie ever on Netflix? The, uh, one of their own movies that they distributed through the platform. I'm guessing that's the one that he's talking about. And so if Netflix believes in him as far as eyeballs, like that is a giant reason. It, it's kind of like it kicks off raw on netflix to, and he's gonna be he, i would imagine he's on the first show i mean you have an all hands on deck yeah. probably for the first yeah. show it's gonna be like one of those special reunion shows or or whatever those special anniversary shows that they do where they just can bring back everybody but that is the fascinating piece of this to me now i'm always you know i can't part of my problem with being a wrestling fan is i cannot just enjoy the moment like we just had this great moment with sting and i'm already talking yeah. about wrestling you think what's next that's just the way that I think about this stuff and how it keeps me uh, engaged. But man, that's gonna that that is a, a mighty mighty challenge, and and it, and it seems like he's got his teeth sunk into this whole thing. So I'm I'm intrigued at where at where they're gonna go and and all the things that they're building up to right now. Me too. I, I'm very excited for it. I want to see where both companies go. I, this is a really hot period for everybody. So, uh. I, 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 whatever WWE does, it's going to be fine. Their audience is going to love it. Cody will have his moment. Everybody's get, it's It'll be fine. But, you know, I kind of want to see things a different way. And I don't like the mess ups here. There's been a couple bumps in the road and I don't like that. It's unnecessary for the story. What do you think? Now, this is something that you and I haven't talked about. And we'll, we'll talk sort of wrestling business here for the last five minutes. So Raw is done in September, right? They are off the yeah. USA channel in September. SmackDown comes to USA right at that time. Like so so for USA, they're not going to miss a step. They're just they're going to have Raw one week and then all of a sudden SmackDown the next week. At least I I think that's how it's going to work. I'm not 100% sure. But there's this pocket of time where raw doesn't have a home yeah and i don't i don't know if netflix i i don't if netflix wanted them in september they would have just t- taken them in september there's a specific reason they said january i'm assuming so where does raw go for those last few months i don't there? know but here's the problem right do you expose yourself you know, unnecessarily, do you go on Peacock and devalue this move that you're doing? Or do you extend on USA? I don't know. I, I, I think the best thing would be USA extends this and keeps them going because why do you want to take USA away has the both shows, right? So then the USA for, has both shows for the time. USA being. has both shows. 
I, if I'm WWE, I'm going to take less money to stay put and not shake this up because the move to digital, move to, to non-linear is going to play a huge part in their story for the next X amount of months, mm -hmm. right? It Already people are anticipating hiccups as far as viewership go. I've seen the arguments that the viewership is going to be lower. I've seen the argument that accessibility to, to, uh, to an older demo is going to get harder, which is absolutely true. I think those 55 pluses are going to start plummeting off that cliff. However, what do you do if you have no home? And they don't yeah. right now. I, 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 can't, I can't imagine that this was a mess up on the WWE side. They are, these are the best of the best within mm -hmm. TV and contracts. How do you say, well, we'll figure it out? Okay, here's an idea. Now, let me know what you think about this. Sometimes they do Raw versus SmackDown. So that, that could be a creative thing. And because, you know, the, the, you don't actually lose connectivity of Raw because you're still seeing the Raw stars. That, but here's also the interesting thing. Does Peacock and NBC pump the move to Netflix? Like, how can they market that thing when they're competitors with Netflix? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm very confused by the whole thing, to be honest. I, I don't think it's... I, I'm just going in with the mentality that they, they know something we don't. And they're yeah. just not ready to make that announcement. And it's going to make sense because you don't mess with your TV. You don't mess with ad revenue. You don't, you don't change the perception of what you are. Uh, this is a company that is continuously been on the air since 1993 every single week with no hiccups yep and you know how does this look they've for never for gone dark there's also they've never gone dark except for when vince is gone how does this look for your investors they were very big on what do the investors think about staff remember that yes I, I I don't know. I, I think there's something here. Uh, it's very strange that they did it the way they did it, but I'm going to go with the confidence that they know what they're doing. By the way, do you think TKO wants Vince to sell all of his stock? <laughs> I would. I want. <laughs> I think TKO wants him to disappear as as quick as possible. Um, yeah. Man, he sold some stocks, huh? Yeah. Almost four hundred million dollars worth. Yep. He still has it's about five and a half percent. So Dave was talking about this on Wrestling Observer Radio. He's like, well, either he wants to, you know, if you if you believe the company is growing, then you kind of want to hang on to the stock. And especially if you're going to leave it for your family. But if you don't think they're going to be growing, then maybe you sell them and, and, and you just get the money. I think that there may be a little bit of like pressure from those guys be like, dude. <laughs> You know, little by little, let's just try and get rid of all of it because we we don't want you attached anymore. And to Vince, and he I mean, got he his could, cash he out. Could, he could cash it out, and then he could just reinvest it, right? You know, he he, he he's not just going to put it in a bank account. He's going to reinvest a lot of that money, and he can I, leave that for his family if that's what he wants to do. I had a dream where I was having total night terrors, where he started his own promotion at like the age of like eighty five. Oh God, he starts another one. After his NDAs and everything have cleared and, you know, with the company, not not what he did. Um, did you ever see that happening? No, I don't. You don't? I, you don't. I think it's too much work. Like, he, like as much as we want to think, like, he's a crazy workaholic, like, I, I, I can't imagine he had those same legs in the last 10 years that he had previously. Probably not. Like, look at, look at the XFL. Look at how quickly he gave up on it. He was just like, eh. Not even worth it. Twice. Under Alpha, under Alpha Entertainment. Remember, he still got that entertainment group, Alpha the Entertainment. Alpha. Oh, all Alpha Wrestling, A A W. <laughs> it just, it just jacked up dudes. Everybody's just jacked to the gills. Maybe just brings back Titan Sports. He could bring back Titan Sports. He could, he could have you know his vision of the Roman gladiators. He could do that whole thing again. Well, you, you saw that. Um... Gosh, what what there there was some crazy person was going to do an Olympics or something where it was going to be non-drug tested or like 
actually you're going to encourage people to get on crazy amount of drugs. I forgot there's some conservative dude who was like trying to get that thing going. <laughs> what? You, you didn't see that? No. It, what is it was like, it, yeah, it was like a non drug tested competition just to see like, you know, if people how, just break these crazy records or whatever. How, how big and strong you could get. I mean, yeah. Listen, everybody's on something. Every, <laughs> I, 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 I know too much about this stuff. Everybody's on something. Nobody is squeaky clean and looks like that. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how many times you tell me you are eating clean and you diet and you have 80,000 grams of protein a day. It is, it is impossible to maintain that body without some sort of assistance. Okay. You know, who's going to tell you that it is possible. Oh, it is, you're going to get a DM. Dave? From two people, you're going to get a DM. One is Dave. Uh-huh. And someone's going to text you in a very stern manner. Well, you know, I've had that conversation with Lance many times yeah. in the past. And, you know, Lance is an anomaly. I don't think everybody in the wrestling business is an anomaly. No. You know, those guys are... I believe Lance when he tells me he's... Oh yeah. Never did that stuff. I there's no denying it because he's so disciplined as a human being. These guys are not all disciplined like that. You know the only thing you know, I've they, ever they, seen Dave take. Oh, what well, ooh, scandalous. Like what? What has he taken? I've I've seen him take creatine. That's it. I you know, there needs to be an expose on this now. <laughs> How is he consuming this creatine? How is he ingesting the creatine? Like, I still use the powder, the creatine powder, but I think he, he may have yeah. had, like, some capsules or something. But, yeah, that's the only thing I've ever seen him take is, is creatine. And I, the, only, the, the only thing thing that I take is uh, TRT. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, what like, a, my concoction of vitamins every day, you know? Yeah, yeah. What a way to end. Uh, I love it. I love it when we, get, when we end with the, the TRT. Uh, all right, so like I mentioned, in the near future, we're going to work on getting Big Dave on here to do Q and A. It may yes. not be on a Tuesday because I know Tuesday is kind of what he considers his off day, so it may be another day if we can work it out with our schedules as well. But that is going to be the next Q and A. And you know who we also need to bring back here is we haven't Ooh. talked to Denise in a long time. We need to get Denise. We have back not spoken to Denise. She's we have doing not big things, speaking. man. She's got all these shows. Radio. Yeah, she got renewed for Bust Open Radio. Like she's doing big things, and I am so happy whenever I see something Me new too. that she's doing. Because this is her lifestyle. This is her. This is her gig, and she's so into the gig, and she hustles so hard. I just love seeing anything, any good news from her about another gig that she gets. Because just so happy and proud for her. So. Yeah, me hopefully too. we'll we'll bring her back and do something similar with the with the Q&A thing down the line. All right. So for Andrew, I am a double G. We will see you when we see you. Peace out.